Hi guys, it's Shelly here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. On today's video, I'll be sharing with you a colour along from Joseph Kattenbang's mythographic Wild Winter. I actually coloured this page back in January. By mid-January, I think I'd completed this page, but I've just not had a chance to edit and put the video together and upload it for you guys. I've had so much going on and then um, my parents came to visit so of course I was very happily spending my time with my parents and then unfortunately I fell ill and um, I've barely coloured recently because of that and um, yeah so it's just taken me a really long time to get this video out for you guys. So I really apologise for that but hopefully you guys will enjoy the colour along. On this video I will be using a few mediums, I'll be using Neo Colour 2s for the background, I'll be using Ohuhu alcohol markers actually um, for basing, so I don't think I've done a colour along with Ohuhu alcohol markers, so um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy watching me work with those. And then I'll be using my Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer's over the top. Now you do not need to base with the Ohuhu alcohol markers if you do not have them. You can use any other markers that you have, water-based or alcohol markers. Um, or you can even just go straight in with your pencil. So it's absolutely fine. I just felt like playing with my alcohol markers since it was a it's a one-sided book. And I wanted to see how I felt about um, using alcohol markers as a base. So yeah, I thought I'd just play around with them and hopefully you guys enjoy the video um, with these few mediums. At the end of the video or at the end of my colouring I do use um, Tuli Art paint pens for covering up some black lines and I use a little bit of glitter gel pen and Winsor & Newton white ink and a Posca white pen and um, yeah I think that's about it. As I've been doing recently, and I think quite a few of you mentioned that you really liked that I was doing it, um, in, my, in the description box below, I will put the list of all the colors I use for each element on the page so that if you were to follow the color along, you can always have a look at the description box and get your um, mediums as well as the specific colors ready um, so that you can just go ahead and um, color along with me. So yeah. Um, some of you may not be using Albrecht Dura pencils, you may want to use a conversion chart to convert it to pencils that you like to use, so that's absolutely fine. So yeah, hopefully it's a bit useful to have those pencils, um, the numbers and names of pencils in the description box below. During the video, I will dip in and out with my voiceover to explain certain elements that I'm colouring, to sort of share my thought process with you guys. So yeah, hang in there if you do like to hear um, how I go about doing my pages and my thought process. Um, if you like listening to my thought process, you can always um, yeah uh, see the video through so that you can get bits and bobs um, as we go along. But every element I will try to explain what my thought process was. So to begin with, I usually like doing my backgrounds first, especially in the mythographic books, because the mythographic books are very complicated or very detailed, and doing the background already removes a lot of empty space and you're able to see the main illustration a lot easier and to see all the little, little details that um, the artists include. So even though this page doesn't seem that busy but it does help just to get the background done and to be able to visualize the main line art. The paper as you guys probably already know most of you may have at least one mythographic the paper is amazing in these books it's so much fun to color in these books it's just such an enjoyable process and because of that I've chosen to use um, different mediums just to play around and I like doing that on these pages. And um, I just feel that in the mythographic books, my it just really brings out my creativity with regards to colors and, you know, trying out backgrounds and trying out different mediums. And so I really enjoy coloring in these books. This time I chose to go for Neo Color 2s for the background. And I have found that I actually like doing um, pink backgrounds for some reason. I'm not sure why I went for pink on this occasion, but... As soon as I looked at this page, I thought of very soft sort of colours. And for me, I thought pink would look really nice. And obviously, 
I don't always think out of the box with regards to the colors of certain elements. I'm quite conventional in my coloring. So I knew that there were cacti on the page. So the cacti were going to be green. Green and pink go beautifully together. And I tend to use the, the combination of those two together quite a lot. I think I'm going to have to start changing that because I've noticed that it's it's my comfort zone that when I look at a page, I automatically look at um, green and, and pink. And a lot of the time the background is green and then the elements on the page like flowers and stuff are pink or um, clothing is pink. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to start thinking outside the box and thinking up different color combinations. But on this occasion, I thought pink would look really nice. And yeah, I was really happy with the colors I chose for the background. I knew it would go with the green and then I just had to think about other elements. Now, like a lot of pages, I don't plan out my pages completely. It's not very common that I'll pick a page and literally plan out every single color for every single element or even plan out every single color I'm going to use that page, uh, even if I don't um, apply it or don't um, match it up with a certain element. I tend to consider one or two elements on a page that I'm 100% sure I know what I want to do because usually when you look at a page, um, if you're in the mood to color that page, or for me at least, when I look at a page and I'm, I'm, in, I, I'm inspired to color that page, usually it'll be one or two elements on that page that grab my attention. So either it will be, oh, I really want to do this for the background, or um, it might be one of the line art elements that I'll be like, oh, this element is going to be this color. And I will play with that. I'll start with those particular elements in mind uh, with the colors I've decided, and then I'll go ahead and then just see how the page sort of unfolds for me. So in this case, I knew 100% my background will be pink. Um, I then started adding a little bit of yellow as I was going towards the center of the page. I'm not too sure why, uh, but I think yellow and pink look really nice for backgrounds, especially for sky backgrounds. Um, so yeah, I just went for that. And then I knew that my cacti were going to be green, a brightish green. Other than that, I knew my cute little hedgehogs were going to be conventional colors, brownish, and that the little, um, what, what would you call them, orbs or the little round um, elements, they're not ball balls, but basically I was going to make them glass with a met the design on the on the circles would be metal. And I was going to wait and see first whether it would be silver or gold. Um, but I knew I wanted to try and make the rest of those circles look like glass objects. Other than that, I had no other idea of what I was going to do. So I decided to just play along and see what happens. Using Neocolor 2s means that I activated it with water. Um, as you probably all know, Neocolor 2s are water-based um, crayons. And so you can activate them with water. And usually what I do is I tend to go over to uh, over the base that I've applied. Sorry. I, I apply the, the crayons directly to the page, usually most often than not, and then I activate it with the water. And usually I find that it may be a little bit washed out because it's water-based, it's like watercolor. Um, and so to just brighten it up or to intensify the color, make it a little bit more bolder, I would usually go over with the crayons again, either direct to the paper or off a palette or off the, the crayon itself. Um, but, I do have Caran d'Ache Pablo's and I forgot to mention that I use this as a medium, but I don't think it's very important because I use a very tiny amount just for the background. But I did use Pablo's for darkening up the outside, sort of framing the outside. So just, um, yeah, darkening it up a little bit. Um, so I used pencils for that um, this time round, but usually I would use Neocolor too. So you could always go over if you don't have Pablo's just go over with your Neocolor 2s and deepen up the outside border sort of um, of the illustration. So I definitely did not color the entire background with the pencil I just wanted to deepen up the the border part. As you guys know I do like the contrast between light colors my my light areas and my dark areas and I feel that when you're doing backgrounds most often I tend to do my backgrounds dark on the outside of the page coming 
um, becoming lighter towards the center. So drawing your eye in to the main illustration in the center of the page. Um, obviously, if your main element is not on the center of the page, you may not want to do that. But on this particular illustration, that's what I was trying to do. Now, I didn't want to darken up the background too much. I still wanted it to be a soft pink color. So I didn't go for very dark colors with the pencils. But yeah, I deepened up a little bit of the border for that particular reason. And if you noticed, I did pull a little bit of the colors from the Neo Color 2 into my glass, uh, the round glass objects, because um, I didn't color over those areas uh, within the circles um, because I didn't want them to be too dark because I want the object to be glass. So anything that you're seeing through the glass will be slightly lighter um, because of the glass. It will be slightly lighter than the surrounding. So I just, as I was activating the Neo Color 2s, I sort of pulled a little bit of the color into the circle elements. Um, and then, uh, so, so it's just a bit lighter than the surrounding. So even when a leaf is sort of behind one of those circles, I will color over it. You'll see um, how I go about doing that, but I'll make it a lighter shade to the other leaves that are not sitting behind those circles. Um, just to give it a bit of color because it is see-through glass, so you will still be able to see the elements behind as the artist has drawn. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's how I did it with the background, just pulling in a little bit of the color into the um, circle elements. With the pencils, I'll just show a little um, section of it on camera and then the rest I'll do off camera because it's quite repetitive. As you guys know, I do tend to do this a lot for repetitive um, elements on a page just so that the video is not too long. As it is, it's already probably two and a half hours um, long. So yeah, I just, I'll show you a little section and then the rest of the page will be done like that. And I'll show you the screenshot of what the page looks like at this point once the background is completed.
loved how the background turned out, the colour that I'd used. And um, so once it was done, I decided to start playing uh, with my alcohol markers and to first start putting down colour on the next element that I knew what colour I, I was going to go for. And that was the cacti. I decided to use alcohol markers. Um, normally I would have probably either based with Albert Durer pencils and activated it with water, or I would have used my Tombow Jewel brush pens, uh, which are water-based markers, and I absolutely love using them. Um, but because I had the alcohol markers, I decided to start playing around with them and to also try, along with just basing with them, to try and put in some shading with darker colours as well. So dark in the shadow areas, lighter um, highlight areas from the word go with the alcohol markers and then go in with my pencils and hopefully reduce the amount of time it would take me to do this page. But I'm still slow and I'm, I'm quite a perfectionist. I have OCD and I just like to take my time. So even though I used alcohol markers, I still took my sweet time at this page. But I loved playing with the alcohol markers and seeing how they work together, how they blend together. I don't like that they go through the, the, the page, obviously. Uh, we know that they do, um, but it's a one-sided book. And I guess I can get around that if I enjoy using them so much. And um, yeah, just make sure that you put pages on the back of this, um, sort of a barrier between this page and the page uh, after so that you don't get bleed through to the next page. I know I wouldn't want to be sacrificing any of my mythographic pages. I just love these books way too much. With the alcohol markers, I'm still learning how to use them and still figuring out what method I prefer to use, whether I like going from my dark shade first to my light um, or whether I like going the other way. But in this instance, I decided to go with the light first because um, I thought I'd put down my light base from the word go first and then I decided to start playing with the shadows and um, yeah it's a learning process for me I'm still um, figuring it all out with alcohol markers some of you may, may have been using alcohol markers for quite a while but for me it's a new medium and um, yeah I'm going to I'm, I'm going to play around and figure out which way I like to do it but I think for this particular page it did work to go and put down a layer of light first because again it just block colored a whole section of the page um, starting to fill it up so it's easier to see other elements as well and to differentiate from elements so to figure out where all the cacti were it was nice just going down and putting down that light color and then it was just relaxed for me to go in with darker shades and fill in my shadow areas I don't have swatches for my markers I don't normally do even for my tombows but I will put up on the screen the name and number of the markers I'm using. So if you do have Ohuhu markers, you can always follow along if you decide you want to use them. A lot of uh, people have actually asked me whether I prefer um, the Ohuhu alcohol markers or the Tombow water-based markers. Now, it's a comparison between these two markers because those are the only two markers that I actually own in my, my coloring collection. But um, it's really hard to actually tell because I've been using Tom Bojo brush pens for so long and um, I do love using them. I love their color range. I love that they don't go through the paper. I love that they're versatile in that I can use them on any page um, without bleed through bar obviously some Amazon quality books. But um, I like that I don't have to worry and think about bleed through or um, I don't have to think about it's, you know, the, the paper quality because with alcohol markers and some of the slightly less, um, you know, the, the, the papers that are not of very good quality, sometimes it's not just the seep through through the paper, but also the bleed. Um, is it do they call it bleed or? but going over the lines, um, so it, sometimes it can go, it spreads on the page itself as well. So you might go right up against your light, line art and you look like you're within the lines, but then suddenly you'll just see the alcohol marker sort of spread out of the line art. So yeah, you do have to think, depending on what paper you're using, how you're going to use your alcohol markers. With water-based markers, I don't have to do that. Um, so it's it's relaxed for me with the Tombow Jewel brush pens, but I'll get a hang of the alcohol markers, I'm sure. But uh, with regards to um, 
alcohol markers, you're able to blend them better. They're streak free if you work fast and um, that gives a really nice finish from from the start of your page. And you, sometimes you don't even have to go over with the pencils if you're really good at your alcohol marker work um, or if you like that finish. Whereas with water-based markers, you can't, um, you, usually you'll get quite a bit of streaking and um, you can't blend on any paper directly to the paper or blend the colors together because um, you need proper mar marker paper because it's water-based. However, the other thing I like about water-based markers is that you can use them off a palette and use them like a watercolour. And I'm used to doing that with my Arbrick Dura pencils. And so it just really matches my style of colouring using the Tombow Jewel brush pens. So to be honest, I can't actually pick yet. I think I like both. I like aspects of both and I dislike aspects of both. So um, yeah, I think I'll end up using both types of markers. Um, on different sort of pages in different situations. Um, so sorry, I don't have a straightforward answer as to which one I prefer for basing. I like them both. But um, yeah, I think with the water-based markers, the using being able to use it off a palette really helps in certain uh, types of books. So certain books which have really smooth paper, sometimes it's hard to get down pencil, depending on what pencils you're using. Um, but if you have smooth paper, using water-based medium sort of just uh, gives a bit of extra tooth to the paper. So if you activate, for example, Arbrick Dura pencils and then you go over with your pencils dry, you sort of get an, a bit of a roughness to it. So just like that with Tombow Jewel brush pens or with water-based markers, if you use it off a palette with water, with a water brush or a paint brush with water and just paint it onto the paper, it sort of uh, increases the toothiness of the paper and you're able to lay down more colour. So it does help with smooth paper as well. So yeah, there are lots of positives, I think, for water-based markers and a few negatives as well. And same thing for alcohol markers. So I think they're very different. Um, and I'm at the moment enjoying both of them, which is brilliant. On screen, you'll probably be seeing me go in with my darker cut shades, starting to create the shadow area so that when I go in with the pencils, it'll be easy for me to um, lay down the colors in the right areas. And um, I go over with my light uh, marker right at the end, just sort of to blend it or to make it, uh, to darken up the light base a little bit more so it looks a little bit more blended rather than uh, a big contrast or a sudden change in the dark shadow areas and the light areas. And then, of course, after I did the cacti, I knew the colour of my hedgehogs were going to be brownish. And so I decided to base them as well. And I think at this point, I probably decided, and I don't always do this for all my pages, but I think I decided that I was going to base everything before I went in with the pencils. And I don't always do this because, like I said, I don't know, I don't tend to always know exactly what colours I'm going to be using. Um, on the entire page I tend to just go with the flow and if that means basing one element coloring it with coloring it in with my pencils and then moving on to another element I usually tend to do that but I think if I'm not mistaken I did at this point start figuring out my color scheme and went ahead and based everything before I went over with the pencils. And again, with the hedgehogs, I did also try and bring in a little bit of shadow areas so that when I came in with the pencils, I knew where my shadows were going to be already. And it was easy coloring from there with my pencils, relaxed coloring. So for me, usually basing is twofold. It's just basically blocking up um, areas of white paper with color so that it doesn't feel as intimidating and it also starts to show up other elements a bit more clearer and it also makes it quicker with pencils but I also use my basing to start putting in shadows um, and I never used to do this at the beginning of my coloring I used to just go for one color for the base but nowadays I do try and put in a bit of sh shadowing from the beginning when I'm doing my basing because I do find that when I go in then to deepen up my shadow areas and just you know um, basically put in all the details um, it's easier and it's a bit more relaxed because I've already done the thought process um, while I was doing my basing so then it's just a matter of relaxed mindless almost mindless coloring.
I didn't do much for the snow um, sections on the page I just decided to put a little bit of a very light bluish grey colour uh, just to give a tiny bit of colour for the snow and again to map out where I was going to lay down the colour with my pencils and which areas I was just going to leave white um, and obviously at a later stage, uh, right at the end of my pencil work, I would then go ahead and cover up the line art with a white paint pen to make it look more like snow. At this stage I did not know what uh, colour, how I was going to differentiate the leaves from the cacti. I decided to go for the base colours, I think pretty much the same. So the alcohol markers I was using were pretty much the same as I'd used for the cacti. But I did have in mind at this stage that I was going to need to add a little bit of a different colour to hopefully slightly differentiate it from the cacti. Um, but I hadn't decided on what colours I was going to use yet, so the base part of it, the basing part, was exactly the same as the cacti, using the light shades first, going in with my darker shades to create the shadow areas, um, and then when I came to do the pencil work, I started putting slightly different colours to just ever so slightly differentiate from the cacti. I'm not sure it shows in the finished illustration, uh, but in my mind, it, it, it would work that way, um, that it would sort of look slightly different. Thank you. 
forgot to mention with regards to putting in shadows I tend to use my light source usually from the top of the page and more often than not coming from the top left corner um, as you you're seeing it on screen so top left corner of the page and um, that's how I tend to just usually go for my light source especially if there's no light source on the page so there's no candles there's no lantern there's no lights on the page um, then I'll usually naturally for some reason just go for the light source from the top left and I use that to decide where my shadows are going to be and um, yeah I like doing this shadow part even with the markers because it's straight away starts creating that little bit of 3D effect which I love trying to play around with as you guys probably already know I like to do the really dark um, shadow areas to try and create that 3D pop on my pages. Once I'd done the most obvious elements on the page, so the colors um, that I'd already had an idea of in my mind, um, then it was time for me to start working on the flowers, which I think were the most difficult for me because I hadn't yet decided what color they were going to be. But it's always the exciting part for me when I don't know what colors um some of the main elements are going to be, especially if I put so much colour down on a page and they're quite similar colours. So there's so much green, for example, on this page and we have so much pink on the page. I need to break up that colour and that's where the exciting bit comes for me when I'm um, colouring my pages because this is where we introduce another colour. And um, so I was looking at the page and I didn't know what colour to go for but I knew that I didn't want to do pink flowers like it would be natural for me to go for quite um, pink flowers and so I brushed that thought aside I'm like there's no way I'm doing pink flowers even if they're going to be slightly different to the background like I would have probably gone for dark pink but um, I then thought of uh, orangey yellow. I thought that would go really good. That works really well with pink and it works really well with green. But I'm like, it's such an obvious choice to go for. And so the next thought that came to my mind was, can I make purple work? Because it's a wintry page, I wanted cooler tones to the page. I thought maybe purples or blues could work because I want a cool effect to the page. And that's how I settled on um, the purpley bluish flowers. However, when I was looking at the flowers, I did know that I didn't want to make the entire flower petals blue or purple because um, I wanted there to be a little bit of a pop. And the way I tend to achieve my pops is by doing, um, is by creating a big contrast between my dark uh, colors that I use on an element and the highlight or the lighter colors I use on, an, on the element. And so in this case, I decided to just put a little bit of color on the tips of the petals and keep the rest of the petals white. So that is a massive contrast between the tips and the white um, highlight areas, sort of. 
and um, that's how I decided to do the flowers and I thought they will pop off the page because of that big contrast and um, yeah I, I, I don't know in my mind I thought it would work and so yeah that's what I decided to do just a little bit of color on the tips of the petals and going into a white petal blending in or fading into a white petal and so I put the tips of the petals as purple and I started with my light shades again and then darkened up the tips ever so uh, well darkened up the tips with darker shades of purple um but trying to limit myself to right at the tips of the the petal not bringing in the dark purple too far into the petals and then giving a little bit of blue, I thought will have a nice effect, a bluish purple flower. So I introduced a tiny bit of a very light blue. And um, yeah, that was uh, the decision I made for my flowers. And I'm really happy I did because it's not natural again for me to go for this sort of a color of flower. I would very easily go for pink flowers and make them really bold and bright and probably the whole petal would be pink with some areas of dark and some areas of light pink but um, yeah it was nice that this came to my mind and sometimes I don't know where ideas come sometimes it might have been from something I've seen um, and it's sort of stuck in my head and I, I look at a page and it just sort of pops up and says oh that will look good so I'm sure I must have got some inspiration from somewhere at some point in time um, but it just came to my mind um, at this stage. And yeah, I'm, I'm really glad I went for these, this color of flowers. So like I did for the other elements, I decided to base it all up um, so that it's all set out um, before I went in with the pencils.
I think I've mentioned many times before that all my mythographic pages, because they're such detailed pages, basing really helps with my process of coloring these pages because I like to lay down the colors, map out the colors, um, cover up all the whites of the paper so it doesn't feel as intimidating before I start off with the pencils. And I hope at this stage you can see how it would probably help um, basing, uh, whether you're basing with alcohol markers or you use your you know, watercolor pencils or Derwent ink tents or um, water-based markers or watercolor paints if you know how to use them well. Um, so yeah, there's so many options that you have to be able to base with. And I think on detailed pages, um, it really helps um, because now when I go in with the pencils, which you've probably seen on screen that I've started going in with, I know where my shadows are, I know where my highlights are, and it's just nice, relaxed, mindless coloring, and just that, you know, what we use coloring for is for the relaxation of the mind, for de-stressing ourselves, and this is the stage where I start to feel that. Not that I didn't feel that it was de-stressing me using the alcohol markers and laying down my colors. I love that part. That's the creative part for me when I'm thinking out my colors and mapping them out. Um, but my mind is working at that point. It's working to try and figure out, okay, what colors am I going to use? Where am I going to lay out the colors? So yeah, my mind is working a little bit. But now that all the colors are laid out, it's just a matter of getting your dark shades, your medium shades and your light shades, and then sitting down and just going over your base and um, yeah, just perfecting or putting in your detailing, um, you know, um, and so that's why I call it mindless coloring at this stage. It just feels so relaxed um, and you can sort of zone out when you're coloring. You can listen to something and that's what I tend to do. Um, so, yeah, I really do like basing um, for a few for a few reasons, um, as I've mentioned probably many times. But uh, yeah, now I go in with the pencils and I'm just going to work on uh, working in my shadow areas, um, you know, deepening up the colors. I like a pencil finish, so I still do quite a bit of pencil work, um, probably more than I need to. So you'll see how you feel. If you do basing, you may not need to go through with your pencils as much. You can already see the details with the base and you may need to go in with a few, just maybe one or two pencils to perfect it. Um, but I love a, fin a pencil finish. And so for me, I still do go in a little bit with the pencils. I feel that um, I get my most enjoyment when I'm using pencils. So I don't mind spending more time going over with pencils. But um, it's a lot quicker, definitely, than if I went over, if I went in with pencils without a base. But yeah, now I'm just going to work through my cacti. So I've chosen a few shades. So I've gone for quite a dark green, um, some lighter greens, just to give a bit, bit of pop of color. And you can also add certain other colors, like slightly different, uh, would you call it hues, maybe, of green to add a bit of interest and maybe not cover the entire uh, surface that you're based with that particular color so you're adding hints of other you know shades of green into the into your element into the cacti in this case and um, so I like having a base because it just sort of creates a different shade at the base and then you can play around with the pencils you're using over top to give different effects so yeah I really enjoy doing that and um, so yeah you'll she see me just basically now deepening up my shadow areas, adding a little bit of interest to the highlight areas um, on the cacti. I didn't do it much on this page, but if you wanted to lighten area, any areas that you're based with a, a different medium, you can always go over with a pencil, a white pencil, for example. I think here I'm using ivory um, to just brighten up those highlight areas or to lighten the, the shade of the base that you've put underneath. And um, 
as I've mentioned probably in other color alongs or other how I colors, the base color I tend to use for the highlight areas will be the lightest color I have down there. So even though I go in with really dark shades in the shadow areas, I'll try and maintain um, the highlight areas as quite light um, from the word go so that you don't have to go in with white pencils to try and lighten it up later on. Um, and to make it a quicker coloring, if you do have your lightest shade that you want um, on an element as your base color, then you don't have to go over the entire element with pencils your highlight area will not have pencil on it. It will just be the base marker, for example, in this case. And as I've mentioned before, I love making my shadow areas really, really dark. So you will see me using a dark sepia to darken up my shadows even more. But that for me is the, I don't know, it's just the wow moment for me because it sort of creates that 3D effect that I love to get and love to play around with. Yes, it takes a while to get to that stage. So if you're not someone who likes to take so much time with your pages, you may not want to layer up as much as I do. Um, but I like to do that because of I know what effect I'm going to get when I layer up so much. But yeah, some people don't like to do layering, so it's absolutely fine. But in my color alongs, you'll usually see whether I base up or not, um, I go in with a lot of layers in my shadow areas. And this is what I'm doing here.
So I've shown quite a bit of the how I'm going to color the cacti uh, with the colors I've used and where I'm putting my shadows and highlights um, on screen and so I'll do the rest of it off screen but I at as you can see probably right now I am putting down um, just the chromium green opaque to indicate where my shadows are going to be as you've probably noticed in a lot of my coloring I work from my shadow areas into my highlight areas and so um, I always start in the shadow areas so I'm just laying out where my shadow areas are going to be and then you'll be able to figure out um, how to work into your highlight from the colors I've used previously so yeah I'm just showing you where my shadows are going to be and then do the rest of it finish the rest of the cacti off screen because again it's very repetitive hope you guys don't mind I really enjoyed working on the flowers because of the colors um, I'd chosen for the flowers and I loved how they were looking against the pink background. Um, so yeah, all I did was with the pencils, again, um, like I've done for the cacti, just went in with um, shades to darken up my dark areas, so the tips of the petals, uh, going in light and creating that deep contrast that I like. And then in the white areas, I do use some greys. Um, you'll see on screen when I get to it, but I'll use, a, uh, I think, a little bit of cold greys, um, very light cold greys, just to sort of help with the perspective or to help with the 3D effect more than anything else. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing now.
So I showed how I did one flower and then the rest of the flowers are exactly the same and you'll have seen a screenshot on what um, the page looks like. So you can always uh, pause it at that point and see where the, the shadows and highlights are if you need to. Um, ho so hopefully that gives you a rough idea of how the rest of the flowers would be done. And I love how the purple is looking on the page and it just breaks up all that green and the pink that's on there. Um, so yeah, I, I was really liking how the page was turning out at this stage. And then there was not much else actually to do on this page with regards to what colors to add. So then I was just sort of working through it and uh, putting down color on the leaves, filling up those leaves with colors. And I think I use a little bit of pink just to bring in a bit of a hint of pink to these uh, leaves so that it differentiates it from the cacti and sort of brings in a bit of pink from the background. Um, no reason why, just um, like I mentioned earlier, I didn't know how I was going to just make the leaves look a little bit different. So they're not much different from the cacti. I didn't want them to look, um, I didn't want them to stand out as very different greens. I didn't mind them sort of looking pretty much similar, but just hints of pink um, that differentiated it a little bit. At this stage, I only color the leaves um that are outside i'm saying outside but that are not sort of uh, covered up by the circles um because obviously like i mentioned the leaves that are going to be sort of behind those circles will be lighter so you'll even have noticed that i didn't put any shading or shadows down with my dark greens uh for the basing part of the um the process of this page because i wanted to try and make sure i don't go too dark um and then find it hard to lighten up those those areas within the circles or that we can see through the circles because it was going to be a glass um element a glass ball um so even at this stage when i come in with the pencils i decided to wait before i colored uh whatever elements are behind the cla the glass balls um, but also because I didn't exactly know how I was going to approach these glass balls yet. As you can see, I've not done any basing on the patterns that are on the ball um, or anything else with those balls yet because I found those quite a challenging uh, element to tackle. And so I decided to leave those to last so that I started to get an idea of what the page was looking like before I tackled those glass balls. So yeah, I go ahead and I color the leaves in, I put in all my shadows and uh, put in the little hints of, I think it was salmon if I'm not mistaken, and did I use raw umber? Just a little bit of a different color into the leaves compared to the cacti, but whatever is seen through the glass balls are untouched at this stage.
and I had my green pencils out so then I decided to start I, I decided that I hadn't um, colored in the inner aspect of the cacti where the little hedgehog is balled up and so I went in there and darkened up that to make it look like it was a little circular cutout in the cacti and um, so I made it really dark um, and while I was coloring that then I sort of it came to my mind what I had decided to do for the glass balls I decided that the little patterns were going to be gold like I said at the beginning it was going to be metal I just didn't know what color I was going to go for but I decided gold would look really nice with all the colors that are on the page especially the pink and so and it adds a little bit of warmth because all the other colors are fairly cool colors um, but bringing in the yellowish gold would bring a little bit of warmth to the page or a warm color to the page and so I decided to go for gold for the little patterns on the glass balls.
I like to show you guys screenshots just so you see what each stage looks like when I've completed it because yeah I'm someone who does tend to color elements sort of grouped up in a way um so yeah especially in certain pages um so yeah hopefully you saw all the gold completed on the glass balls and I showed how to do it on one ball and then the rest are exactly the same glass is always a challenging element to tackle on pages um I still struggle to make objects look glass or see-through glass especially and uh, so I decided to leave the glass balls for now and go ahead and colour the hedgehogs because I thought at this stage that seemed more uh, straightforward for me and um, yeah I tend to do that again on pages I just jump from one element to another whatever is easy for me to tackle or whatever I feel like tackling at that point in time is what I, I, I tackle um, again people do ask me like where do you start colouring from so for example I've shown you guys my dad's completed pages recently and he tends to work usually I've noticed uh, very organized in that he likes to work from the top of the page down um, whatever element he's coming across so he won't color all the trees first or all the grass first and all the flowers first he will actually just work whatever comes in his way from the top of the page down that's how he works I can't work like that I tend to just jump from one element to another depending on what at that point in time I either feel like coloring or what I get inspired to color maybe I suddenly get an idea of how to tackle an element and I will go and color that element and then finish all those elements on that particular page um, so yeah I decided to start coloring the hedgehogs with the hedgehogs I'd already sort of put down a base I didn't put that much um, shadowing from the word go when I did the basing ever so slightly I have but it was very hard to because obviously the uh, spikes or prickles on the hedgehog are quite small and so it would be quite hard um, for me, a, a beginner with alcohol markers, to try and, um, what do you call it, uh, do such precise work to make the hedgehog's uh, prickles or spikes, I don't know what they're called actually guys, um, but to make them look 3D. Like I said, I like to make everything look 3D on a page. And so um, I didn't do that much shadowing for the basing part of the, the hedgehogs. But now with the pencils, I start working on that. And like I say, I usually go in with a dark shade first in the shadow areas and work through to my highlight areas. So what I decided to do was just pick on clumps of the spikes um, and darken up areas um, under some of the spikes and leave certain ends of the spikes um, a very light, the, the base color basically, so that it's lightest and that it looks like certain areas are under those highlighted ends of the spikes. Hopefully that makes sense, but when you watch it on screen, it, it will hopefully show up. And so that's how I worked with the hedgehogs to try and make them look 3D. Just choose areas where I was going to put the shadows and try and leave some tips of the spikes um, the base color so that they look like they're standing out or they're on top of other spikes and that sort of started to create that 3D effect. At first I wasn't sure how I was going to do that but once I started putting the pencils down it started working for me and then um, and then I always go in at the end of my uh, laying down my layers I always go in with my darkest shade to deepen up those shadow areas and make everything pop and look more 3D. And then uh, with the hedgehogs to help the spikiness, I think if I'm not mistaken, I can't remember off head right now, but I'm sure I must have used some paint pens at the end, quite a light color, just to add a few uh, lines in to the spikes. Um, again, to make them a little bit more, not fluffy, but sort of fluffy, but more spiky, um, rather than just look all smooth and um, perfect with pencils. So I think I did go in with paint pens um, once the, all the pencil work was done on the hedgehogs, but you'll see that on screen.
last element I tackle with pencils is the glass balls, the glass part of the glass balls, because yeah, that's usually a very uh, challenging element to color with pencils and to make it look uh, like it's a see-through glass. But I do have, I think, a how I color video. And if I remember, I'll try and put it in the description box below. Um, a how I color video glass bottles, um, transparent or see-through glass bottles. And what I like to do is start off by laying down a white shade. Now, the Faber-Castell Albert Dura White is not very opaque, so it doesn't show up that much. But I don't really need it to show up too much. What I put down the white for is sort of, sort of like a resist in that when I come in with other pencils I when if I go over the white either I'll feel the white and make sure I'm very light-handed and not either <laughs> two things one is that I'll feel the resist um, and I will reduce my pressure but also um, when I go over with a different pencil over the white it will be a lighter shade it will not pick up as much of the pigment and so that will automatically make those particular areas uh, lighter and help with the glass effect because on glass objects you get reflections you have light reflections which are usually white or you know other colors as well the glass elements would pick up other colors are around the, the 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 object the glass object and so you could put in any any co other colors as well if you wanted I like to put in the white for that reason um, so that it helps with me uh, laying down my other colors and leaving those particular areas as the white highlight reflection areas on the glass. And then later on, after I finish my pencil work, I can always go and emphasize those highlight areas with a paint pen, a white paint pen, um, if I wanted to, or leave it a bit more subtle um, with the pencil. So the white pencil will be a very subtle white reflection and then certain areas I would probably go in with a white paint pen and make even brighter. So you have those slightly less reflected areas and slightly um, oh, and the more whiter highlight reflected areas as well. It's really hard for me to explain, but again, hopefully you can see it on screen as I'm doing it. Um, but yes, so I always lay down my white first to help me. Um, and then I go in with other pencils. So with the glass ball, I want to darken up the outer parts of the ball within the ball a little bit. So I go in with a pink and I'm darken up, darkening up the sort of the outside of the ball going in lighter towards the center of the ball. And um, <clears throat> with glass objects like a bottle, for example, that's what you would see. You would see the edges of the bottle a bit thicker um, or a bit darker and uh, the center of the bottles would be a bit more see-through. So that's the sort of effect I'm trying to get when I'm darkening up the, the pink within the bottle. And again, I'm using pink because obviously our background is pink. And then the other elements that we're seeing through the ball, so for example, the leaf, I'll start coloring that, but I will make sure that the leaf, that the part of the leaf that is closer to the edge of the ball Will be darker and as I'm going in through the, to the center the leaf will get lighter so hopefully again that makes sense and I'm also trying to create um, which I don't know if it was very successful but I didn't want to go too dark but I was trying to create shadows with my pink pencil um, that is created by the gold um, detailing on the glass ball because on, in my mind, that gold is like uh, is a metal, like I said, but it's sort of wrapped around the glass ball. And so when light is hitting it, like I said, from the top left corner, it will create a tiny shadow um, on one side of those. It'll create a bit of a shadow. And I was trying to create that shadow to um, make it look 3D with regards to the gold being outside the ball wrapping around it and so I try to use the pink to deepen up certain areas that would uh, create a sh that the gold would create a shadow on the glass ball with a pink I hope that works I'm not so sure it did but um, as more of the glass ball is colored hopefully it will show up a bit more I also add a little bit of gray for the 
glass part of the glass wall just to again give it a little bit of depth and give it another color because the glass would have its own color and obviously it would pick up the colors around it as well as what we're seeing through it so that's why i added a bit of gray i'm not sure if that worked but hopefully um that was the right thing to do but i still struggle with glass objects and so yeah it was a challenge for me this part and that's probably why i left it till the end but basically, you'll just see me uh, working on that, trying to create the 3D rounded effect, um, laying down the highlight areas, um, creating the shadows that would be uh, caused by the gold uh, detailing and putting in the grays and just sort of finishing off any coloring in any elements that are we're seeing through the glass ball so like the leaves i'm starting to put in a bit of shadowing into them they won't be as dark as the leaves that are not seen through the ball but they will be a little bit more detailed than i have um, just as the base only of course at the end of the pencil work i will go in with a white paint pen to cover up the black line um, of the glass part of the glass ball um, to help with that glass effect as well I show you how to do the one glass ball. Uh, actually, I show you how to do a couple of glass balls because um, there are different different elements that are sitting behind the glass ball. So just to show you how those elements would work. So first I show you one ball with just leaves behind it and then I'll do the rest of the balls in a similar way. And then also where um, at the bottom of the page where the glass balls are sitting in front of the flowers, I'll show you how I do that as well so that you can see how I lay down the co colors um, for the flower petals. Uh, that we can see through the glass ball as well. So you can get a better idea of how those balls are colored too. Um, but yeah, pretty much the same technique I'm using for all the balls.
And of course, I'd forgotten to do the snow. So then I went ahead and finished off the pencil work with the snow. And um, all I did was just use a couple of shades of blue to brighten up a little bit of the, the snow where I'd laid down the base. So just going over the base color with uh, slightly brighter colors. And um, then obviously I would use the white paint pen at the end to cover up the black lines for that as well. So that it looks white. Um, but then once the snow was done, that was the pencil work all completed. Once my pencil work is done, I usually like to go in with some embellishments and usually my embellishments are tend to be limited to paint pens, glitter gel pens or metallic pens and um, Winsor & Newton white ink or gold ink, but basically Winsor & Newton ink. And um, I like to do my paint pen work first and then I tend to go in with the uh, glitter gel pens and things like that because they tend to take a little bit longer to dry. But in this case, I do have a new set of glitter pens, paint pens uh, from Lightwish, um, the Fly, Fly C by Lightwish. And um, I thought I'd use that on the page. And I've just recently done a video on these pens. So you can always check it out. If I remember, I'll put it in the description box below. But I decided to play around with these pens on the page and I love how these pens work. They were beautiful, so much sparkle to them. So I used that um, first and then I used a lot of white paint pen um, for covering up the black lines of the glass balls, the snow, um, the little round circles that are uh, sort of dotted around, which are probably snow, uh, falling snow. And um, so, yeah, I use a lot of white paint pen as well. And then a little bit of detailing um, for, I think I use green paint pen for the leaves and cacti. And um, yes, definitely for the cacti cacti spikes I think and then um, a little bit on the hedgehogs 
and then to finish the page if i'm not mistaken i use winsor and newton white ink uh, for sprinkling of the the page just to give a little bit more of the effect of falling snow for the glass balls for the light reflections the white light reflections i decided to use the arctic simp tap white paint pen because it's a brush tip and I thought it would uh, give a slightly lighter white, um, not as bright a white um, because what I tend to do is I do tend to sometimes use my finger to smudge it um, on the page just to reduce that uh, harsh lines of the white paint pens. So I thought that the brush tip would work really well. So you will see me use that as well, uh, but just for the uh, white light reflections on the glass balls but there's not much else to share with regards to embellishments you'll see everything on screen i'll share the names numbers colors of the paint pens i'm using so that if you are following along if you have those paint pens you can use them of course if you don't have paint pens in all the colors that i'm using you can always use a white paint pen and if you want to tone down the white uh the bright whiteness of it you can always use um a pencil maybe one of your lighter shades of the pencil you've used for that particular element um, to just go over the paint pen and that will reduce that whiteness a little bit. So you don't have to have every single color of a paint pen. Um, a white or an ivory would work perfectly fine and you can always just color over it. Um, I don't have that many coloring supplies and I loved the, the Thule Art paint pen so I went out and bought quite a few colors and I do enjoy using them a lot um, so that's why I've got quite a few colors but you don't necessarily need them just so you know um, especially to follow along this color along but I guess I'll leave you guys to it now and let you uh, watch the little bits um, of the finishing touches and um, I really do hope you enjoyed the video I hope you like how this page turned out I absolutely love how the page turned out I will put a screenshot at the end of the video uh, just so you can see what the finished uh, result looks like and I think I've forgotten to share it on Instagram so I'll also be sharing it on Instagram so you'll see it there too um, but yeah I hope you enjoyed the color along and like how this page turned out a lot of you asked for a color along in a mythographic book and I hope you enjoyed the page that I chose um, I enjoyed coloring it and I loved sharing it with you guys so I will leave you guys to it and hopefully I'll be back with you again soon um, with another color along or another video but I'll be back with you guys soon all right take care thank you for watching and see you in the next one bye bye